Our very special guest is our good friend of the show. He's been on Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural many times, Bill Salas. He'll be here um, in just a few minutes. It's a pre-record, but we're talking about his book, Nuclear Showdown in Iran. We want to show you a trailer for that. If you don't have it in your library, it's cutting edge information. And with everything that we're seeing right now in the Middle East, I think you'll find not only the trailer, but the following interview riveting. By far the most important thing today, not only today, but in a historical perspective, the most important thing is to make sure that a militant regime, a militant Islamic regime or a militant Islamic movement does not get its hands on the weapons of mass destruction. Missiles cloud mid-east skies over the Persian Gulf. Iran shuts down the Strait of Hormuz. Arab oil is choked off to world markets. Hezbollah and Hamas launch scores of missiles into Israel. Terror cells initiate cycles of violence in America. About 2,600 years ago, the Hebrew prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel issued parallel end times prophecies concerning modern day Iran. Today, the rogue country is becoming a nuclear nation and aggressively advancing its hegemony throughout the greater Middle East. Nuclear Showdown in Iran, revealing the ancient prophecy of Alam, is a non-fiction thriller taking the reader on a journey of discovery through the eyes of the prophets and the minds of today's key national players. But there's a backstory, an even bigger story. It's a spiritual showdown in Iran between Islam and Christianity. Iran is being transformed into a Christian nation in this generation. Iran has the fastest growing evangelical population in the world. Iranians are experiencing miracles, healings, visions and dreams. And with the help of satellite television, millions of them are coming to Christ. Two years ago, Iranian government began cracking down on Christianity. But it's not working. Christianity is growing in Iran. Iran is in the Bible prophecy and many Iranian Christians are excited about what the Bible says about the future of Iran. Please pray for your brothers and sisters in Iran. Pick up your copy of Nuclear Showdown in Iran, revealing the ancient prophecy of Alam. Hey folks, thanks for keeping it right here on Politics Prophecy. I'm a supernatural report. As you can see, our very special guest and good friend of the show, Bill Salas, is here. And I called him over the weekend, actually texted him right over the weekend uh, because of the assassination of another nuclear scientist. Bill, when you heard that, what were your first thoughts? Well, you know, we've got this interim period between, you know, the new presidential inauguration in January versus where we're at right now with this contested election. And there's all this concern about is there going to be an attack against Iran by Israel or maybe even Trump, et cetera. And so when I heard about that, I thought, well, now that of course they're fingering Israel for this assassination, which is just another aspect of Israel's covert a attempts to stop Iran's nuclear program. You know, they did, they tried the Stuxnet virus that was back in uh, 2010. Uh, they took out about a fifth of I Iran's nuclear centrifuges at that time, that Stuxnet worm virus. And between 2010 and 2012, they killed four Iranian nuclear scientists and one was wounded. Um, Qasem Soleimani in January of 20, the, the IR, the uh, Revolutionary Guard chief commander. Uh, there was an Al-Qaeda guy assassinated in number two in Al-Qaeda in Tehran, November 14th, just recently. And then on November 29th, there goes, uh, you know, uh, Fakhrizadeh, Fakhriz I guess that's how you say his name. He is the chief nuclear scientist. So this is all part of Israel's covert attempt to stop Iran's nuclear weapon. But the point is, at some point, uh, they're going to have to go with a full-on overt attack of Iran. Now, they've been doing overt attacks. They've already struck, you know, in Syria over a couple hundred times since the last year and a half to try to stop Iran's uh, hegemony spreading through the Hezbollah with the missiles and things like that. So uh, I'm watching this stuff very closely because you know, Israel is going to do something. And, and what was interesting is that on the date of the attack, uh, on, well, on November 27th, 
Pentagon announces that we're sending the USS Nimitz over to the Persian Gulf, sort of as a deterrent. Did, did Trump know something was coming down the pipe? Also, uh, around, I think it was the 29th or something, went to see Netanyahu, met with uh, Mohammed bin Salman on November 23rd. And, and of course, that's the hush. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Saudi yeah. Arabia. Yeah, and, and Neom, the, the new city of Neom. Uh, of course, he's saying I, you know, he's keeping that hush hush. So, in other words, what's really going on overtly behind the scenes with Trump, Netanyahu, uh, Saudi Arabia, et cetera, all who are enemies of Iran? So, you know, this is my concern. It's all covert right now, but what's going to be the next thing that happens overtly? Well, you know, it's interesting. We know that that Trump obviously is very pro-Israel. We know that the Obama-Biden administration was not. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They gave the Iranians, you know, billions of dollars. It's just it's unprecedented. Um, they're, the media is calling the election for Biden, but I, there's not a chance in, in Hades that I'm believing that, and other people are contesting it like crazy, and it's not over yet. And um, let's just let's just hypothetical. Let's say Trump's uh, attempt at, to stop the to stop the steal, because that's what it is. It fails for whatever reason, and I don't believe that will happen. But, but let's say it does fail. Now you've got Biden in there, and Biden's already shown us exactly who he is uh, with eight years of, of Obama, and they were certainly no friend to Israel. My question is this. Uh, we've got basically, you know, 50 days roughly before the inauguration. Do you think Trump, along with perhaps the Saudis, maybe a coalition, Israel, the Saudis, the Emirates, something like that will hit Iran? Because they all know Iran is, is after Mecca and Medina. What are your thoughts? Well, I think Iran, let's start with Iran first, and I'll answer your question about a potential coalition. Iran is going to I think, sit on the sidelines, hoping that Biden wins and gets, they revisit to try to renew and renegotiate the JCPOA that was put together in 2015. Now, you cannot pull back that $150 billion that Obama gave to Iran. Uh, meanwhile, uh, they, they've already got themselves 10 times the limit they were allowed to in the JCPO of, of enriched uranium, two and a half tons. And the Iranian parliament, as we speak today on November, December 2nd, has uh, suspended nuclear, they, they've passed a law to suspend any further nuclear inspections by the IAEA. So, you know, when it comes to, and, and it says, unless the sanctions are lifted, and not just by America, but by all the P, P5 plus one countries, including Russia and China, you're not going to be able to roll back the clock. Plus, there's a sunset clause that was put together after 10 years in 2015, which will be 2025, five more years. Iran's going to still want that in any kind of renegotiation where they can go out and pull nuclear breakout. Even John Kerry said when he was negotiating this nuclear deal in August of 2014, Reuters reported that there was just a two month window of, of nuclear weapon breakout at that time. So we're at a point right now where, you know, everybody's watching real closely what Iran's doing and they don't let us know what they got. They've got weapons, they've got missiles that can be ICBMs they developed during this JCPOA period. They can take, carry nuclear warheads. They can hit Israel in seven minutes. They can be launched from uh, mobile launchers that can be hard to trace and, and hard to, they can move them quickly. They can be fueled on the spot. You know, this is a very livid situation and Israel knows it. So from my perspective, uh, is it possible there will be a coalition that comes against Iran? I think so. We've been told in a prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 49 that there's a flurry of enemies that will actually at some point attack Iran. It says. Uh, Iran will be will be a disaster because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Jeremiah 49, verses 34 through 39. And he, it says Iran and the area of Elam, which is by where the Persian Gulf is, the western side of Iran, central western, it says will be dismayed before their enemies, plural. So I do believe a coalition at some point is predicted in 596 BC by Jeremiah. Well, at some point, when the Lord is fiercely angry, which I believe is now, to attack Iran, and it creates a, a, a nuclear disaster when you understand that prophecy. Matter of fact, the background I've got here, you see my book and DVD on that particular prophecy if people want to know more about it. You know, it, I'm just amazed. Um, I, I, I understand the vitriol. I mean, I understand, but it makes no, no sense. I mean, there's obviously, in my opinion, and I'm sure you'll concur, a supernatural dynamic to the vitriol, to the, to the abject hatred 
that these people have uh, towards Israel. The Iranians have, no, not the people of, of Iran. I mean, we, we had years ago, we had you on the show along with, um, I won't say the pastor's name, a lot of Christians. In fact, the revival in Iran is unbelievable and it's still ongoing. So the people and the Mullahs are two different things. But this ideology stems from the Shia branch of Islam. And it's just, it, it's, un, it's unbelievable. Your thoughts? Well, it is. It is supernatural. Of course, uh, Satan wants Israel to be destroyed. He wants there to be no so-called God's chosen people because if he can get rid of the chosen people, if Satan can eliminate them, which he'll do through the blanket umbrella of Islam and the radical Shiite regime of the Iranians, uh, then he can say God is a promise breaker because he promised Abraham that he would have a people forever and a land for those people. That's why there's always the attacks on the land and the people throughout history. It's a satanic thing. Right now it is coming full circle with powerful weapons, ICBMs, potential nuclear warheads coming forward at Israel. And Israel is uh, running a Samson option. In other words, they are going to basically destroy whoever they have to destroy in order to survive. And, you know, Israel's going to mess themselves with respect to their, now they're talking about are they going to have to have a fourth election. You know, there's problems with that coalition still. The COVID-19 thing, what, what a dynamic that's going on in our world right now, LA. Bill, it, it's unprecedented and it's not going away. I mean, 2020 was a a, a banner year in, 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 not in a good way, obviously. Um, millions of thousands of people lost their job. Millions of people lost their job. Thousands of people um, lost their businesses and it's not coming back. And of course, Biden is talking about the dark winter and another lockdown. God hope, I just pray to the Lord that uh, the, the election would be overturned and it's not over yet. Uh, in spite of what people like Attorney General Barr and others are saying, I'm uh, Trump is a friend of Israel. He's made no bones about it. Unlike both the Bushes, Clinton, Obama, the whole crew, they promised, you know, oh Israel, and we'll move the uh, the capital or, or the embassy rather. And of course, they never did, and, and Trump did it. So it, it's, um, you know, I just part of me just thinks that Trump's going to be here for another four years, but if he's not. Um, just like Obama with, uh, allegedly withheld supplies to Israel when they were going out, they did that. So I don't think the Biden administration is any friend of Netanyahu and certainly not the people of Israel. Um, I want to bring it to a close, but what are your final thoughts? What, what do you expect to see? Because Trump's got this like 50 day, roughly a 50 day window in which to do something with the Israelis if he's going to do it? What are your thoughts? Well, I think, uh, first of all, the, if indeed we find out that Trump had is there ballot, uh, ballot frauds and things like that, this is going to be the biggest scandal in U.S. history. That is going to preoccupy this country going into 2021, and there'll be a lot of criminal charges and things going forward. Meanwhile, that does not take down the thermostat of what's going on with Iran and their nuclear program. They are enriching uranium at nuclear pace. And there's a three month window that they're looking at. A lot of the experts that Iran could actually break out with a nuclear weapon if they go unchecked. They're trying to block off inspections, as I said earlier, and things like that. So Israel does not have the luxury of seeing what happens politically over in America. That's why I think Netanyahu's meeting is covertly with Saudi Arabia. I think that's why he's talking to Trump and the USS Nimitz has made its way over there again, uh, flexing muscles, saber rattling, et cetera. But at some point, it's going to be more than that. It's going to be overt action against Iran. And that's when you've got the prophecies, the dual prophecies of Iran. There's one with Persia and Ezekiel 38. There's one with Elam, where they're both part of Iran, and Jeremiah 49. So, you know, LA, you and I both know God is long suffering. But these prophecies are going to find fulfillment. And at this point in time, with the pandemic and who's, who knows what's going on, and everybody's concerned about the vaccine, is, is that the so called mark of the beast? I mean, all these things are setting up. And I don't personally think it's the mark of the beast, but I'm just saying the prophecy world is going afire, ablaze right now with all the things that are going on. And I personally think something epic, something biblical, something prophetic could happen in 2021. Bill, thanks so much for coming on Politics, Prophecy, and Supernatural. You always have such keen insight into what's happening uh, in the Middle East. You've been studying it for years, and, and you're are certainly our go to uh, prophecy expert when it comes to all things. Uh, around Israel and uh, Ezekiel and 
everything, Isaiah 17 and all those all those prophecies. Tell us how we can get the book. Give us an address, Bill. Yeah, if they want to get the, especially this particular topic with dealing with the prophecy of Elam in Iran, not many people are talking about this one. We came out with this book several years ago. I think go to prophecydepot.com, prophecydepot, like homedepot.com. We also have these things, all of our books and DVDs on Amazon. Bill, thanks so much for coming on, and I'm sure we'll be speaking again in not too distant future. Take care. Thanks, Elaine.